This is supposed to be your show. I'm tired of carrying the ball around here. As Porkchop Cash said one time to Gorgeous George Jr. when they had ended their tag team partnership and Porkchop had become a babyface, he said, you've been riding on the wagon and you've been dragging your feet. And I don't mind if you ride on the wagon, but don't be dragging your feet. <laughs> Brian, you're dragging your feet. That sounded like Ernie Ladd. Well, Pork Chop Cash sounded a little bit like Ernie Ladd sometimes. Boy, Gorgeous George Jr., there's a weird gimmick. I mean, because he had a lot of success. He was a manager. He was a wrestler. He was seemingly very Southern. And, of course, Gorgeous George <laughs> was not Southern. Gorgeous George. <laughs> and how old was Gorgeous George when he hatched young Gorgeous George Jr.? Have we ever okay. talked about this? Well, let's think about this, because <laughs> first of all, a gorgeous George Jr. was a, a, a guy who worked in a variety of places and had a lot of top spots from the probably what late sixties through the, the late seventies. And, uh, he was a manager toward the latter part of that primarily, but he was one of those guys, a wrestler manager, you know, he could do, he could go either way. No, no puns are intended there. Um, but with the gorgeous George Jr. gimmick, he worked on it, it, he they brought him in and gave him a big push uh in Memphis and and when uh and the whole territory when when Jarrett and Nick were still together, but Jarrett had the Memphis end, he came in and got a big push as a baby face for Southern title matches with Lawler and then switched heel. And um he worked a, a variety of places, but since he had to be, he would have been born in Easily 1940, right? 40 ish, early 40s. You would think. So when Gorgeous George (laughs) Sr. died in 1963, he was not that that old of a man. Was he 49? He was uh, maybe 49. I mean, he looked much older than he was. Well, yeah, because of alcoholism and bad things. But so let's, uh, so 63, 40, 50, 1940. He could, it could have been, could have been, you never know. It wasn't, but it could have been. The age would have fit, but the point is, yeah, old Gigi, uh, it, it, you know, when he did the gorgeous George Jr. gimmick as a baby face, he did the whole thing. He had the valet, he had the flowery robes, he had the Zabada, but when he was a heel as a manager, he had like the colorful jumpsuits and the jaunty you know, cap and carried a riding crop he could whip guys with and everything, but he was still gorgeous George Jr. Where was he from? You know, gosh, off the top of my head, I do not know legitimately, but he was a very Southern, Southern yeah. fella. Although George Wagner did wrestle in various Southern states during his career, both before and after he was gorgeous George. That's, I think that's what Gigi Jr. was counting on, that people knew that. Now, wasn't, it could have happened. Didn't Robbie Eagle wrestle as Gorgeous George III for a time? Yes, he did, as a matter of fact. I believe he did. That may have been right before then Savage bought the rights to the Gorgeous <laughs> George gimmick legitimately, I guess, from because George's wife was still around, right? Uh, his last wife, yeah. His final wife, yeah. And uh, so Savage bought the rights to the Gorgeous George character for that girl that he was seeing at the time <laughs> and and that went nowhere but for a while there was actually a female wrestler named gorgeous george well the big rumor too was after he bought the gimmick lanny had nothing to do and randy when he went to wcw got lanny a deal there too but lanny wasn't being used that he dyed his hair blonde and oh, he that's was actually right. going to be the new gorgeous george but instead Randy gave it to the stripper he met (laughs) and made her gorgeous George, which made no sense. (laughs) How did we get started on gorgeous George Jr.? Well, it's just a meandering kind of show. Well, oh, we went through pork chop cash to get there, but also, and then they did the deal when, because Lawler and, and gorgeous George were heel partners for a while. And then as a matter of fact, they did two turns in the same weekend because Lawler and George were the tag team, Southern tag team champions in Memphis, but it was George and Porkchop that were the Southern tag team champions in Louisville. It just wound up that way for whatever reason. In those days, they did those kind of things. Who do you like better as the manager of the Mongolian Stomper? Gorgeous George Jr., Don Carson, or Bearcat Wright? Ron Wright. 
Oh, or Ron Wright. Ron Wright. I like Ron. Uh, Bearcat Wright was bigger than the fucking Stomper uh, and didn't stay with him that long. Um, Gorgeous George Jr. had a good run, but it just, it was an odd looking pairing. And, uh, and, but a lot of success in Southeastern with that combo. True, but, but, well, Stomper was going to be a success regardless. He had so much heat. You could put fucking Howie the mailroom guy with him. But I just like Ron's because, because Ron was, his interviews were always more fun. But anyway, where I was going with that story before you interrupted me, when Lawler and George split up, George came out. He was the baby face now. He came out and he cut the promo about how. I can't believe that Jerry Lawler said that my father died drunk and penniless in a back alley with a whiskey bottle in his back pocket. Jerry Lawler, my father wasn't a drunk and my mother wasn't a hoochie coochie dancer. (laughs) 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 Uh, But anyway, 